Welcome once again to Musings by Demon. Today we're going to go over a deck I mentioned in a previous video. You see, my wife is my editor, so when I did her birthday video I tricked her because I wanted to surprise her with her real birthday present, Tiamat Dragons. Tiamat is a 7 mana 7-7 seven, seven legendary dragon god with flying, and when she enters the battlefield, if you cast her, you can search your library for up to 5 dragon cards not named Tiamat that each have different names and put them into your hand. This is a callback to an old 70s D&D &D adventure where Bahamut would send you to fight Tiamat in her home on the first circle of hell. She was attended at all times by five chromatic dragons, one of each color, black, blue, red, green, and white. Tiamat is a very powerful commander capable of dominating games. Anytime you have a tutor, even a limited tutor in the command zone, your deck becomes stronger. With that in mind, and knowing my wife already has a couple of very strong decks, I decided to build this as a themed deck. Instead of just throwing in the strongest dragons in the game, I decided to start with every single dragon or dragon-adjacent card from Adventures in the Forgotten Realms. I did not include the Dragonborn who aren't actually dragons, but all the rest, including Bahamut, made it into the deck. Now with our theme firmly decided, let's keep in mind our checklist. 50 mana sources, usually split between 37 lands and 13 pieces of ramp. 10 pieces of card advantage. 8 to 10 pieces of spot removal. 2 to 3 board wipes. 1 to 2 pieces of graveyard hate, and 1 sudden I win card. So what are the challenges we face? First of all, dragons are expensive, but we don't have a way to cheap them into play. This isn't a graveyard deck like our previous video, so we want a ton of mana. We don't need as much card advantage as most other commander decks, because our commander tutors 5 creatures for us. Also, our deck is slow, so to ensure other players don't get too far ahead of us, we're going to want to run some extra board wipes. Finally, because this was a gift for the wife on her birthday, I didn't want to skimp, so we don't really have a budget. My wife isn't much of a jewelry person, and she was more than happy to get an expensive new commander deck built around her favorite creatures, dragons. To start, let's take a look at our board wipes. We've got some early game board wipes in Wrath of God, Time Wipe, Blasphemous Act, and Dam, as well as some one-sided board wipes in Ruinous Ultimatum, Cyclonic Rift, and Crux of Fate. For further interaction, we have Arcane Denial, Swords to Plowshares, Path to Exile, a Braid, Assassin's Trophy, and D-Spark for spot removal, and Rhythm of the Wild, Teferi's Protection, Heroic Intervention, and Boros Charm for protection. For card advantage, we're running Demonic Tutor, Windfall, Garrick's Uprising, Teamer Ascendancy, and Ristic Study. We also have Sark and Fireblood and Dragon's Horde as flexible cards that give us either more mana or card advantage. For the rest of our ramp package, we have Soul Ring, Arcane Signet, Chromatic Lantern, Orb of Dragonkind, Herald's Horn, Cultivate, Kodama's Reach, Farseek, Smothering Tithe, and Mirari's Wake. Now most of our deck is either red or green, so we're also running all seven of the guild signets that tap for either green or red mana. Boros, Golgari, Gruul, Izzet, Rakdos, Selesnya, and Simic. The reason we're running signets instead of traditional land ramp is because we're only running 12 basics in our deck, and in testing the list, I found myself running out of basics prior to switching to the signets. So what dragons is Tiamat searching for? I've already mentioned the black, blue, green, red, and white dragons, but we've also got the five legendary dragons from Adventures in the Forgotten Realms. Ebon Death Dracolich, Icing Death Frost Tyrant, Inferno of the Star Mounts, Imrith's Desert Doom, and Old Gnawbone. On top of those, we have the Adult Gold Dragon, Grandmaster of Flowers, Belladros Witherbloom, Galazeth Prismari, Clouth, Unrivaled Ancient, Atarko Worldrender, Udvara Hellkite, Lathless Dragon Queen, Karthas Tyrant of Jund, and Amaranth the Lustrous. Rounding out our theme is Dragon Tempest. Finally, our land base, which is the most expensive part of this deck. We've got all 10 fetches and all 10 shocks, which comes to just shy of $500, over half the cost of this deck. To stay on theme, we're also running a Cave of the Frost Dragon and a Temple of the Dragon Queen, as well as a Command Tower, Exotic Orchard, Unclaimed Territory, two plains, two islands, two swamps, three mountains, and three forests. So let's take a look at our deck and see how it compares to our checklist. 54 mana sources, a little heavy, but with how expensive dragons are, that's fine. Counting our commander, nine pieces of card advantage. Spot removal, we're right on target at nine, not counting the effects from many of our dragons. Board wipes, we did go a bit overboard at seven, but that's fine for this deck. No graveyard hate. For our sudden I win card, it would have to be the combination of Belladros Witherbloom and with Mirari's Wake. With the two of these out, you can make an absolutely ridiculous amount of mana. 
So our deck doesn't check all the boxes, but that's okay. We weren't trying to build the strongest deck possible, we were trying to go for something fun. The point of this deck was to stay on theme and stick as many cards from Adventures in the Forgotten Realms as possible. Maybe, with the new Baldur's Gate set coming out later this year, we can look at some upgrades. But for now, I'm quite happy with the on-theme deck, and so is my wife. Once again, a huge shout out to my editor Cute Stuff. I couldn't make these videos without her. If you'd like to hire her to edit your own videos, there's a link to her Fiverr page below. Please like and subscribe for more content. I post new Commander videos every Monday, or you can click here for more Commander content. Stay safe, and I'll see you all again next time on Musings by Damon.